Well, welcome back. Today, I got the old AT4 squatted down pretty good and uh, got me about 2,000 pounds of uh, new fuel heat source in here and a brand new pellet stove. I've decided that I want to heat this uh, garage space as well as my workshop that is in over this area here. So through that window and this door is my workshop, which I'm sure most of you have seen before. And uh, normally this space, as well as where the cars are kept over there, this space is all heated through a uh, forced air gas fired furnace. And I've actually been thinking about this for years and years and would just love to have the warmth of a wood fireplace but not have the mess, not have the concern, not have the uh, fire hazards of a wood-burning stove. So today I'm going to be putting in a uh, Harman P43 pellet stove. So let's get this out of the back of the truck. I'm going to need the skid loader to get that monster out of there. And this stove weighs, they tell me, about 230 pounds. Harman P43, got it all unpackaged, open it up here, there's a little burn chamber for the uh, wood pellets, there's the ash box that it drops down into, which is accessed through here, pull that out to clean, dump the ash, but uh, one thing nice about this is, is I'll be able to put this in this corner, and I'm going to do an exhaust on this a little bit different. And the reason I'm doing this is because this wall here is a 12 inch thick wall. But what I did was to try to utilize some space. These shelves are six inches deep into the 12 inch thick wall. So I've got six inches of insulation behind this pegboard that I built in and uh, just some different shelves and things that I put in here. And this door will be coming off of this built in shelf and never mind the blow gun. But this now, like I said, this is six inches deep here into this wall. And then I've got the pegboard that I built in. And this is between two studs. And now all I have to do is cut a hole in here, put my uh, sleeve in there, and go through the back side of the wall, which is on the other side of this door. Um, makes it pretty simple. I don't want to go up over here and put the hole because I don't know, I can't remember if my wires go right up and cross to get to all the outlets and everything else. So we're going to do it the easy way. Um, it meets code by doing it this way because I can keep it away from the walls everywhere. It needs to be kept away. Put a hole through here, the four inch hole for the uh, pipe. And uh, there's actually the sleeve is seven and a quarter inches. So I have to cut a seven and a quarter inch hole through there to put the pipe in. So here's the wall thimble. So there's my seven and a half inch or seven and a quarter inch diameter that I go through the wall, put this back together at whatever the thickness of the wall is, screw it together. And I've got all the uh, double wall pipe that I need here. One thing that they said that I can do with this is paint it black with some high heat uh, black. So I might do that. I think it'll look better over in that corner if it is painted black. Uh, will I do that right away today? I don't know, but uh, at least uh, I've got all the pipe that I hope I need for that. And Adam says he's on his way over, so we'll put him to work to give me a hand lifting this out. Like I said, that's 230 pounds, so I think with the two of us, we should be able to do it. If not, uh, well, I'll get my wife. She's got a lot of upper body strength. Well, I roped Adam into coming over. And uh, I actually, my first choice was Lana because she's got a lot more upper body strength than he does. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if that's, you got to watch Adam's video to understand that joke. But we're going to go ahead and slide it off onto my hydraulic cart here. And that way we don't break our backs trying to lower too far. So I guess just keep your hands yep. kind of off to the side. And... Ready? One, two. Yep. Do you have it on the Yep. Okay. I don't know where my fingers belong. There.
I think we're clear. So there, look, we didn't even need them on it or on them. <laughs> Got the stove kind of set where I think I want it. Um, I've run it past my wife and I've run it past Adam and everybody kind of thinks that yes, it would be nice. It is going to move out a little bit, but it gives me a spot over here to put uh, bags of the pellets. But now I've got to come up with where I'm going to be putting this thing in there. And what I did was put the pipe on the outlet of the back of the stove here and put it in here and get it leveled up. And that's right now getting this up here, getting that level to the wall so I can pick my height where it needs to go out. What I did then is I put the level on the top of this up here and I put my mark at the top of the level and then I subtracted half the diameter of the pipe. So I put a little X right here. It is directly between the studs. Put a mark there and now I'm just going to take my uh, compass real quick. And this is a seven inch diameter sleeve on the uh, outside. That's the size hole I need to cut through the wall on the inside and the wall on the outside. And then it's neck down to the four inch diameter for the pipe. And that gives it its, its air gap there for combustibles. So half of my seven is I'm gonna go uh, three and five eighths because I wanna be about a quarter inch bigger so it doesn't, uh, doesn't get too tight on me. So I've got my compass here set up and just scribe a line here. I do not have a seven inch hole saw that I can just chuck up in there and put that in. So that's the size hole I need to put in there. I'm gonna run a drill bit, quarter inch drill bit through that straight through. So I'll know exactly on the outside where that seven inch hole needs to be as well. So, um, not real real difficult this is probably the hardest and the worst part about doing it is getting everything lined up and, and adjusted where you want it and I had to adjust the stove around a little bit and like I said it is going to come out this way some because I need to get the, the stove pipe away from the wall I put it up tight just so I could get a, an easier accurate dimension to the hole in the wall so let's go ahead and see if I can't come up with a, a way to cut that out and Hopefully there won't be any uh, wiring going back through there. So we'll go ahead and get that done. All right, so when I was talking about taking a, a long drill bit, this, this bit here is, well, that's a 12 inch long drill bit. So that'll definitely get me through the six inches I need to go here. So I'm gonna pick my center. All right, and this is just pegboard in the back of this uh, built-in cabinet. So it's going to be pretty easy to cut through. Now what I want to be careful of is where I go through. I'm just kind of just lightly poking and feeling to see because there's insulation in there and as soon as I start rotating this drill it's going to wrap that insulation around there. There's really no way around that but one thing I want to make sure of is that my drill is somewhat level. It's not pointing way down or way up because if I do that, this inside hole will not match the outside hole and it'll just, it'll throw everything into a terrible bind. So that's why I want to try and make sure that I'm somewhat level. Well, let's put this on here. Bubbles a little to the right of the line. Bubbles a little to the right of the line. So if I put my level on the bottom of that, that'll kind of give me an idea that I'm in the right spot. That's the first time I ever did that. So, get it through the insulation, put it under here, all right, right about there, and eyeball it straight through. And there, I think we have a hole all the way through the garage now. So, in order to put this hole in, I don't have a seven inch hole saw. And you can't get a jigsaw twisted all the way around there because the, the bottom base of the jigsaw will hit this wall, this, and everything else. So what I've got is uh, my Milwaukee Dremel. 
with a roto zip tool in it. And if you don't know what a roto zip tool is, they run at a real high speed and it's a, a real deep fluted type of bit. And it's used for going around. I don't know if this is going to work. I've got the uh, paper backing from the insulation right behind this. So I, I don't want to go in too deep because I don't want to get into that insulation and have it get all wound up. I have seen these things break. They break very easily. So we'll see if I can't uh, chisel away at this and see if it even works. But I need something over my ears. All right, so you can see I've got this cut out, and you can see what I mean by it was pegboard, and I used that pegboard in the back of these built-ins, so you can see where I've got uh, peg hooks in there holding things up. But uh, it was just one way to utilize a little extra wall space. I didn't need 12 inches of insulation in that wall in just these small spots. Got that all cut out. I'll pull that out, and there's that six inches of insulation in there, so. That's the hole I need to cut out on the outside and cut the siding. Let's go ahead to getting the uh, thimble in there, the collars, and get them lined up and see how they look. You can hold that one up there. Wanna push the other one through? Oh, there we go. Perfect. You can see here now, or I've got the stainless collar, the one that goes on the outside. It's up there, located pretty darn good. That was from going straight through with that big drill bit. Some screw holes here to mount that to the wall, both sides in and out. And like I said, I've got to get some uh, J-channel for around that. Hopefully we'll be able to get that taken care of. Put the sleeve in. It's screwed in all four corners up there. The J-channel trimmed around it. Screwed in. I've got it all caulked in around everywhere. Now I've just got to, to get my pipe through and get this furnace set where it needs to go to match up for the hole in there. And some of you guys might be saying, well, Man, I don't know about what you're doing there, Doug, but in all reality, if I ever do away with this stove or decide that this isn't the corner for it, man, the easiest thing to do is to patch that hole back up on both sides um, and put the door back on. And I don't have a big hole in the wall anywhere that I have to worry about. So let's go ahead and get this stove moved into place. All righty, I got it uh, back into location. Got the pipe on up and through the wall, everything's set. Got my levels on there. Clearances everywhere around are good. Now I've got my power supply here that, conveniently enough, I have an outlet pretty darn close. This is a clean out, so this cap comes off, twist it, comes out the bottom, can put a tray in there, and from the outside I can run my uh, Chimney sweep brush that I got. From outside, I can clean it and come back this way. Put the tray under the uh, clean out trap there. Uh, push any of it through there and let it drop down. And it should be pretty easy to keep that clean. This uh, thermostat wire is plugged in the back here. And I guess you're supposed to just run that up and kind of away from the stove. So I actually ran it up and it's just below the thermometer on the wall there. It's about uh, two feet away from that chimney pipe. Uh, they say a two inch clearance on those so they don't get don't get too awful hot the power is on to the unit down here and the dial here sets the room desired room temperature uh, here's your on off switch here so i can turn it to constant burn down here or room temp up here and then this is the feed limit they say to put it at four the guy up there that sold the unit said put them at three so we'll mess with that a little bit to see how well it operates out here. And then, uh, so we'll go ahead and get this thing filled up with a, a bag of pellets and hopefully get this thing started up. 
Uh, this is about a one bag hopper. I think these are 40 pound bags each. So it's got an auger down in the bottom there. That auger turns and forward, forces the pellets to go into the burn pot. So let's go ahead and uh, dump some pellets in there and see, see how many we actually can fit in that hopper. Let's see how many we can spill, I should say. All right, well, we're back out here the next morning. I didn't want to fire this thing up last night and then just shut it down 20 minutes later or whatever. Uh, one of the main reasons is, is this thing does require you to put a high temp silicone around that uh, bottom piece there. And I also put it on the outside around the uh, galvanized sleeve, whatever that actually is. I think it's galvanized. But uh, so I've, I've got a bead on the outside around the ring where that pipe goes out and I had it down there. I didn't want to start it last night until that cured up. But uh, I think uh, we are actually ready to go ahead and start uh, augering some wood in and uh, see if we can't get this thing fired up. So the fellow that uh, sold me the stove up at the dealer said, take a handful of pellets and let me open the door here. So just to throw them in the uh, burn chamber or the burn pot there. So grab a handful, throw them in the burn pot. Maybe a little more than that, I don't know. Throw them in there. So we got that, and he said to come over here, make sure that the uh, feed limit is on three, the auto igniter is on, my room temperature is set roughly, and he said either turn it to room temperature or constant burn. So I've got the thermostat wire hooked up, so I think I'm just going to put it on... Uh, room temperature that way it senses that so we should here in a second turn that to room temp blower motor kicks on and i'm going to guess that the uh, igniter will come on here in a second as well Well, there's our very first fire. And right now we are about 48 degrees here in the garage. So I've got it set at, looks like about 70, 71, 72. We'll see how this thing goes. All right, well, it's about five and a half hours later and I could never do this before. Couldn't sit in the chair here next to uh, my pellet stove. Boy, is that nice, having a nice uh, warm heat blow on you. But it's been like uh, about five and a half hours later, and we've gained almost 20 degrees. We started out at around 48, and we're about 66, 68, getting there anyhow. So I think it's doing its job. Um, is this alternative source of heat out here worth the money? Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but... Uh, I guess just to be able to come out here in the garage and sit and enjoy uh, a little bit of warmth. When I brought the truck back in, this whole area has got to reheat because this thing's acting like uh, an air conditioner. It's dumping all kinds of cold into the garage while that's trying to maintain and catch back up. But the reality of, of this stove, um, it works really nice. And so let's, I guess, talk real quick. I paid about $4,100 for that stove, including the two, or excuse me, including the one ton of pellets that came with that. 
does it justify the cost? I don't know yet, um, but I will say there's nothing more relaxing and more comfortable than sitting in front of this fire, having that heat warm you up, especially if you've been outside all day. Now, the other thing that I want to keep in mind or uh, inform you guys of is this garage that we're in right here is 30 by 30, which is 900 square feet. So not only are we heating this area, but you can see I've got a fan here and that's blowing into my workshop area. So we're taking the heat out of this room as well and we're blowing it into here. And this is almost at uh, 60. Let's see if we can't get it close. We're at about almost 60 in here. So that fan over there is blowing the warm air in here. And also, let me turn a light on for you. This particular garage is also being heated from over there. So it's not just that one small area or, or the, the 900 square feet that we're heating. We're heating that over there and then keeping the air circulating. And when I talked about the other form of heat, there's the forced air gas-fired furnace. And it goes into the workshop and the other trunk line goes over into the far garage. So basically what I've done is reversed where the heat comes from in this garage. But ultimately it is to keep water lines from freezing. It's to keep... Uh, my workshop nice and comfortable to work in and uh, give me a little space over here to enjoy. But, uh, I think ultimately it's something that I've wanted and I think I'm going to really enjoy it out here. So let me know in the comments, would you prefer a pellet stove or wood heat? Now I know uh, a lot of you guys might say wood heat from a fireplace and that's understandable but the reality of it is is I just couldn't justify putting a uh, a wood burning stove in here. I didn't want to deal with uh, the possibilities of chimney fires and everything that goes along with that. I've spent my entire life dealing with uh, wood stoves and things like that. So I guess my preference is this uh, pellet stove and not have to really worry about uh, it burning my house down. So if you like the video, give me that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again on the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down for the evening. I already put the switch on off here. So it takes a while for it to shut itself down. It uh, keeps burning for a period of time. Uh, then it'll shut the blower on the, uh, the burner box down. And then I believe it'll shut the blower down off of the, uh, the main system here. So, we're going to just uh, hang out for the evening and check and make sure everything is shut down and okay for the evening before I uh, head inside. Like I said, this is the very first time uh, I've ever burned this. The very first time I've shut it off, so I want to make sure that that's done correctly.